myth number one is that um, we are, or clinicians are, as, as human beings are, optimal decision makers. We always make the best decision and they are the optimal decisions. But we know very much that we are not optimal decision makers. We are suboptimal decision makers. But somehow when it comes to making decisions at the point of care, we seem to forget that. That we can't ask them to do the, give them the evidence and say this is how you're going to be using it. These are guidelines, as guidelines says, these are protocols that you use to the best judgment in a best way. Experts are able to use it a little better than novices are. And you train the novices to use them. But never expect them to do the, the optimal. This is not going to happen. The myth number two, as you would ex assume that if you're an expert in something, um, you would expect them to make less mistakes than somebody who's a trainee. Then I came across literature in airline industry, and particularly in the European transportation system, in one of the other areas, I think it was nuclear plant, where they showed that um, uh, actually experts do make mistakes, and quite a few of them. But the ability to detect it and correct it is so fast and so, and, and so well done that we completely forgot that they actually, uh, that we think they don't make mistakes. I think this is very important that, uh, to remember that and therefore train for that. Train for ability not to force them into not making mistakes, but if they do make mistakes. That doesn't mean we don't teach, teach them at all to reduce mistakes. We should. But also train them to able to, how do you detect your own mistake? So let's mimic a, 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 a virtual reality program for an intensive care unit. And, and see if they, we introduce errors in the, in the system. And let's see how the teams deal with it and train them to it. And train systems to do it like we can train any machines to learn. And so we are at the early stages of it and there's absolutely no reason why you can't train them. Myth number three, um, the protocols and guidelines, they work fine for most cases. For the everyday thing, they double check, triple check, like Starbucks does, as somebody said, and uh, you do it most, and it, and it works fine, and, it, and you do need it. But there are times there are judgment call when things happen as unexpected. So that's when all these things go out the window. And what we call them in our opportunistic decision making, you're gonna make a decision making at that point in care. And we find when most often, quite often in fact, when somebody who's an expert makes a deliberate deviation, they do something novel, something interesting, you know, as opposed to a novice who most often makes an error, you know. So protocols are very good as a guideline for training. As the trainee becomes an expert, they learn this flexibility and adaptiveness, how to adapt this maneuver. Most of the health information technology that they put out there or it's out there are fragile. They don't take into account the, the boundaries of errors human beings make, and particularly in an environment where you're putting it in, in the ICU, or ER, or even primary care. And therefore, the moment you start getting in that kind of tough environment, it breaks up, falls apart, doesn't handle it. So you really need to understand what are you trying to support, and then can you take into account when I suddenly make this big mistake, or when I work normally. So if you can understand that, that's what, you, and you build in that system, that's called resiliency. Mm -hmm.